What's going on guys? Today we're going to be talking about three of the best ways to make your colors pop here in Photoshop. So let's get into it. How's it going guys? My name is Brendan from Outbound Media and you can find me on Instagram at Burnwells. Before I get started, I just wanted to let anyone who's new here know that I make new Photoshop tutorials every single Wednesday. So if that's something you'd be into, make sure to hit that subscribe button. So today what we're going to be talking about is three of the best tools in Photoshop. So today we're going to be discussing three of the best tools in Photoshop that you can use to make the colors in your images come to life. So this is the image that I'm going to be demonstrating with today. It's as is, it's already a really beautiful image, but it's a little bit flat and I just want to bring a bit more life to it. So luckily, no matter what your skill set is in Photoshop, this you can still use these techniques even if it's your first time in the program. It's super easy and straightforward and I promise you guys will get amazing results from it. So what I'm wanting to do with this image is I want to make the colors look a little bit more like a sunset. I want the warm tones, I want her skin to look a little bit more lifelike, not so flat and gray looking. I just want the whole image to be a little bit more vibrant and have more of a sunset vibe to it. So the three tools that we're going to use to do that can be used to make any sort of color adjustments you want. It doesn't have to necessarily be a sunset, but that's just what I'm wanting to do for this photo. So the first tool that I'm going to use is our selective color. So once you vote, open your selective color, you'll notice that you have all these different tabs, but I usually don't play around with any of these individual color tabs. I just play with my white, neutral, and black. I only use my white, neutral, and blacks because I adjust the colors with different layer adjustments that I'll discuss later in this tutorial. If I adjust any color here, you'll notice that the black gets discolored. So as you see here, the blue, when I added blue to my image by taking away yellow, the blacks have now become really, really blue because we're in our blacks tab, of course. So now if I could do that on any of these and it would do the same. So all my neutrals have become extremely blue or skin has become blue and so on you get you get the idea so I really don't want to be limited to how much color I can add to my photo just because of the weird discoloration in our blacks or in a, just our particular range that we're editing so of course you could try to mask this out which would be easy but there is a way that is even better so what I basically want to do is I want to add all the values of light and dark onto my layer mask of my layer adjustment here. All I have to do is go up here to image, down to apply image, make sure my layer is set to merge, channel to RGB, blending to normal, opacity at 100%, and I'm just going to click OK. So now you'll see over here our layer mask looks just like a black and white photo of our image. So if I go to view it, this is what my layer mask looks like. So if you guys are familiar with layer masks, you know that white is 100% visible, while black is 100% transparent, and all the shades of gray in between represent different values of visible or invisibility. So that being said, now that our blacks are pretty much 100% transparent, our colors will not affect them quite as drastically as they did before. So now when I hold Alt, I'm just going to go back to my image here and go back to my selective color layer adjustment. Now when I go to edit my blacks, it doesn't affect my blacks as drastically. I can be a little bit more aggressive with the amount of color that I add into my photo because it's not affecting the specific areas quite as harshly. So there's no right or wrong for this, but since I'm wanting to add sort of a sunset tone to the whole image, I'm of course I'm going to add a bit of yellow to my dark areas and then I'm also going to try to add just a little bit of magenta and then I will also add a little bit of red. So now next I'm going to go up to my neutrals which is pretty much our grays. I'm just going to play around with the, my levels of black and white in my neutral space so I'm just going to probably bring up the blacks a little bit so it's a little bit darker around the background and then of course just like before since I want it to be a sunset I'm going to be adding the yellow. I'm going to be adding a little bit of magenta and of course I'm going to be adding some red as well just like this and now I'm going to finally go to my white and I don't want to add too much white because as you see it makes your skin look really washed out and weird so I might just leave that slider alone for now and maybe add a bit of yellow just to bring some life back into the highlights here and some red as well and also maybe a little bit of magenta just like that. So that is pretty much me going through whites, neutrals, and blacks in my selective color layer adjustment. So just turning that on and off, 
you'll see the drastic difference that that made. There's only three tabs in just one layer adjustment that, did, that made that much of a difference already. So now moving on to number two on our list, we are going to use our color balance tool. So I'm just going to click my color balance and again I want to apply the image to my layer mask so that my so that when I go to my shadows, midtones, and highlights, nothing gets weirdly discolored like it is here, as you see. So you see that the blacks are sort of oddly colored, just like before. So exact same process, I'm just gonna go up to image, down here to apply image. All settings should be the same, and I'm just gonna click OK. So now I can f go ahead and, and adjust these colors to my heart's delight. So I'm just going to add some yellows into my shadows as well as some magentas and of course some red again because it's a sunset there's lots of red you, you know how it goes next I'm gonna go to my highlights and I'm going to add some yellows add some magenta and add just a little bit of red that looks nice and now I'm gonna go to my midtones and I'm gonna do the exact same thing except now I usually will dial in my shadows and highlights and then I just sort of play around with my midtones and I don't necessarily have any particular agenda I just sort of see what ends up looking nice and I definitely encourage you guys to do the same just sort of play around with different tools you'll be surprised by the different outcomes that you might have so now if I turn that on and off you'll see the difference that just our color balance made so now moving on to number one is I'm going to use my hue saturation tool so I honestly think that this is one of the best ways to dial in colors and make those colors come to life is through using this tool the hue saturation layer adjustment tool the reason being is because you have all these separate channels to isolate those colors and you can really really be specific with what colors are being adjusted and when so I usually do not touch my master slider because it will adjust everything in the image so I'm just going to go down to my reds and of course you can't really tell what is being affected fully so what you can do is just with your on your saturation slider just put it up to 100 percent and you'll see everything that is being affected so in this case we see that all her skin is being affected but there also is a bit of the background so i only want to adjust the color of her skin so to change that we can go down here to our little slider and i'm just going to move this down our color slider and until pretty much all of the background is not selected anymore but all of our skin is just like just like this so now I'm just gonna set my saturation back to zero and now I can play around with the values of my reds which is pretty much her skin in this case so I'm just gonna slide my slider up a little just to add a little bit of yellow and make her skin feel a little bit more natural looking next I'm gonna go down to my yellows and do the same thing so I'm just gonna bring up my saturation and now I don't want it to affect any of her so I'm just going to take away slide my slider up the color bar here until pretty much everything is selected except for her bring my saturation back down to zero and again I can just play with my hue of my yellow value so it, I kinda want sort of a earthy tone in the background so I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow like this also I might even play around with my lightness and just make it a little bit darker just to make her pop a little bit more from the background next I'll go down to my greens do the same thing and as you see it doesn't affect as much area but it still might make a little bit of a difference I'm just gonna play around with the hue and I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to those greens as well just like this and maybe I'll even desaturate them just a little just like that. So now turning that on and off, you'll see the difference that that made as well. So you might be thinking, oh, that was so easy. We didn't really make that much of a difference. Well, let me just show you quickly our before and after. So I'm just going to put all of my layer adjustments here into a group, and I'm just going to turn it on and off to show you guys. So that was what the image that we started with, and this is what we finished with. So that's pretty much it, guys. Those are the three best ways to make any of your colors pop in any of your images using Photoshop. So the three tools that we discussed today is our selective color, which we can isolate our whites, neutrals, and our blacks, and sort of change the color values that represent those individual shades. Then we used our color balance, where we can add color into our shadows, midtones, and our highlights. 
Then we went on to our hue saturation where we can dial in the hue of our skin tones and our background and things like that to really sort of give it that final touch that it needs. That's all I have for you guys for today. If you're wanting to see more of my work, make sure to check out my website at outboundmedia.net or you can also find me on Instagram at burnwells. Just a quick reminder, I make new Photoshop tutorials every single Wednesday, so if that's something you've been to, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And also, maybe even consider hitting that bell button so you get notifications every time a new video is up. Again, my name is Brennan from Outbound Media, and I hope to see you back here next Wednesday for another new Photoshop tutorial. See you then. Thank you.